Okay, for question 21, it is also quite straightforward. You are already given an uh, object and the image and you know that for a ray diagram for your converging lens, uh, the object and the lens will be linked by definitely this light ray going straight okay, through the optical center of the lens. So once you draw this ray, you will notice that, oh, okay, C is the answer because this must be your optical center. Your optical center is where the uh, your, 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 this reference line, the bottom of the thing, uh, intersect with this straight light ray. So you know that your answer is C. Okay, question 22 is a bit tricky. Uh, not, not really tricky, la, but you need to do it carefully. So let me draw some, some guidelines first. So what I'm drawing here is the reference line. Okay, the stationary point. So you know that there is this wave. Uh, each point on this wave line represents one particle that is oscillating up and down. So you need to know the base concept is that the particle on this wave is not going to be carried by the wave. It's just going to oscillate about its original position. So with that understanding, you know that your A and B is out already. Correct. Now, the other thing is that then you need to predict how the graph will, will move. Okay. So they tell you that the, the wave is going this way. So meaning that uh, at T plus some value, the wave is going to, to, to be in the next phase and the wave is going to be here. So let me do this. Carefully first. So you know that when when there's when the time advances, the next wave will look something like that. Right? So you know that this solid black line is the old wave. The new wave, after some time, will look like the red one because the wave is moving in this direction. And in order to form this wave, your particle's new position must be on top. So this is the old position, this is the new position, and therefore, the old position, the particle must move up. So that's why you get C. Okay, I make a mistake here. So, understand? Now, if you still have doubts in this, you can come and look for me. I will show you a simulation on the computer and that uh, that we show help. We will definitely help you understand uh, how the particles move. Okay? Uh, okay, number 23 is quite straightforward, uh, which is a longitudinal wave. So the vibration of a guitar string, yes, it produces sound, but the guitar string is actually moving up and down. So that is perpendicular to the wave direction, right? Yeah, so this is actually your transverse wave. Uh, hearing a thunder, the sound is the thing that you hear. So that is a longitudinal wave. So B is your answer. Seeing a lightning in the sky, lightning is visible light wave. So it's a transverse wave. Water wave in a ripple tank, again, it is moving up and down. So it is a transverse wave. Okay, question 24, uh, security feature and all that. Okay, uh, infrared radiation, no, that is not what you use. It is used to detect temperature change. Radio wave used through communication. X-ray require a very powerful uh, source and uh, the 240 won't be able to produce X-ray. So X-ray anyway is used for medical purposes. So ultraviolet, okay? A uh, transmitter uses an uh, antenna to receive the wave signal. Okay, so all this blah 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 is actually the context of the question. What you need to find is that the length of this antenna and then tell you that this antenna is half the wavelength. So basically the question just want you to find the wavelength and then divide by half. So they give you the speed, they give you the frequency, use V equals to F lambda. You, you'll be able to find the wavelength. But remember that your antenna is half 
the length of the wave. So you need to divide by further by 2. Okay, so this one tests you on uh, whether you read the question carefully or not. Okay, this one is quite straightforward. Uh, number one, uh, we have to assume that the uh, scale for both OCR is the same. And uh, number two, you can see that this frequency is definitely higher than this frequency. So you know that X has a higher pitch than Y. So you know that C and D is out already. Then you notice that the amplitude here is bigger, so therefore X is louder than Y, so A is correct. Hmm? Uh, 27, just remember you are actually measuring the time travel by the sound itself plus the echo. So actually the distance travel is 2D, 2 times the, 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 the length. Okay, and you'll be able to get the answer. Okay, 28, uh, remember your proton is actually being trapped in the nucleus. So the proton cannot move, so C and D is already wrong. Now the next thing is that uh, insulator X repel a positive charge rod. If X repel a positive charge rod, meaning that your X is positive and your Y must be negative, meaning that electron must have moved. Oops, oh, sorry. Uh, X must be positive because it repelled the positive charge rod and it means that your Y must have taken a negative charge uh, your Y must be negatively charged so once you have this understanding you can deduce that your electron must have moved from X to Y so therefore your A is correct okay okay question 29 uh, what happened after this process so when you bring I will go through step by step uh, so when you bring the positive rod towards the cylinder, your cylinder will have induced negative charge on the left side. But overall, the hand haven't come in yet, uh, I'm still going as that one. So when you first bring the positively charge over, the, the cylinder is still neutral. Just that on the left side, there will be induced negative charge. And on the right side, there will be induced positive charge. It's just a difference in the distribution. Overall, the number of negative charge and number of positive charge in the cylinder is the same. Three on this side, three on the other side. Okay, it's the distribution that gives the induced charge. But once you touch it with your finger, so once you touch it with your finger, your finger is now acting as an earth. So the free electron from your body will be attracted to this region of positive charge. So electron will rush in and move to your cylinder. So what happened now is that in step two, the overall charge in this cylinder is negative because there is now more negative charge in the cylinder. Number three, now once you remove this uh, positive charge rod, what happened is that the electron will no longer be attracted to the left side and will start to move back to its original position but because the original position now have negative charge so what happened in the cylinder is that this build up of negative charge because your hand is still touching it right because and your hand is still touching it and light charge repel so what happened is that this electron will now flow back to your hand and down to the earth so what happened is that this extra negative electron will now move back to the earth and the distribution of the charges in the cylinder will then be even out again so it will be like that like that like that like that okay the distribution is even again so now when you remove the finger your cylinder remains at neutral okay so that's why your answer is d Okay, 30. Determine the amount of charge. Okay, this one is just the use of formula I equals to Q over T. Uh, just remember, this is mini, so you need to multiply 10 to the power of negative 3. This is in minutes. You have to convert into SI unit, which is seconds. Then, uh, once you plug in the right value, you get the right answer. Uh, 31 is also quite simple. 
So what you need to take note is that when the length is, in, is increased, your resistance will increase by the same ratio. So down here, the R, when the length is increased to 3L, your R will increase to 3R. Okay, when you increase the cross-sectional area to 2A, cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to your R. So what happens is that if you increase it to two times, the resistance is going to be reduced by two times. So when you reduce by two times, it's actually half. So when you combine these two effects, you don't act it up and become three plus half. Huh? You will have to multiply to them because everything is a ratio. Okay, so once you multiply to, to them, you notice that the change is just three multiplied by half is three over two R. Okay, if you are still not convinced, use this formula. Okay, so you have before, you have after. Okay, that means you can actually make row uh, the subject and then you can substitute it in the new context. Okay, if you have uh, difficulty understanding this, come to me. Okay, I will show you how to use, a, if, if you are not convinced by just this ratio thingy, you can come to me, I will show you how to use this formula and then come to the conclusion that, oh, okay, it is really increased to 3 over 2R. Okay?